In this video we'll take a look at Sony SRG300 cameras and if you get the chills out of looking at this guy and his white companion, luckily they can be controlled by Skyhoy controllers so they won't take off into some kind of death race in the galaxy or whatever you might feel. Um, they are friendly and in particular when the PTC Fly um, gets into the game. So in this video I'll focus on the PTC Fly controller although we also have the PTC Pro so uh, the PTC Pro is another PTC controller from Skyhoy. It uh, can do the same in terms of the software because they run the same software, but you have more buttons, more knobs, and it allows you to have more direct access to features. So um, let's look at what I brought with me today. So the setup for this video is the SRG300 camera over here. I have a recorder so you can see the picture from this camera and I have the PTC Fly sitting just here on the table next to me. The PTC Fly is currently powered by Ethernet. So this cable connected to a PoE switch brings power and signals into the unit. Unfortunately, it's currently not connected to anything. This is why the displays were blank. It's also connected to my laptop with this USB cable and I have the Skyhoy firmware updater on my laptop. So what I'll show you now is how we can check out the configuration of the unit because the, the fact is that it's currently not set up to work with the SRG300 but I want to show you how easy it is and that gives you a clear idea about how flexible Skyhoy controllers is when you want to move them from one type of camera to another one or even bring in other broadcast devices. But let's first look at what the, the Skyhoy firmware updater does. So when I click the online configuration button it will ask the camera what are your um, what is your ID? What are you configured to do? And it will bring up now a website where I can see, oh, I have a configuration for video RoboShot cameras loaded onto the controller. So, hey, no wonder it's not connecting to the Sony camera, but it's very, very easy to change. In fact, what I will do is just select Sony SRG300 on this list and that's done right now. We can adjust the IP addresses and then all we need to do is go back to the firmware update and press check for updates. And now it will take like a minute or so and then a new firmware is downloaded to your computer at first and then loaded into the PTC Fly and then we should see it connect to the camera. And now it's verifying the firmware, it's done doing so. We can open the serial monitor. The serial monitor is maybe a little bit geeky. That's at least something I like to look into because it tells me how the controller boots up, which IP address it has, which IP address it's trying to connect to. And it also tells me in this case that it's successfully connected to the Sony SRG300 camera. That's what I see from these lines of code that it's, it was pulling the status out of the camera. Okay, geeky stuff. But still, it, um, it's, yeah, okay, so it's a little bit background because one day you might need to go into the serial monitor. So what that means is that it asked the camera, not just are you there, it also asked the camera, what is your values for iris shutter speed and gain settings, uh, white balance, and I don't know what. So we now know all the state of the camera. So even if a second controller was connected to the camera, we would receive updates. That's pretty cool. So now if we go back to the controller, we can now see uh, how it actually works with the camera. So we still see nothing in these displays because, but, but we see this button uh, has been lit now. So what we'll do is to select camera number one and now instantly we see we have content in these displays up here. So if you haven't seen the PTC fly before, this is how it's usually configured. This button will serve as a multi-shift um, navigation button, kind of. So when I press the lower edge, it will toggle between camera selection up to five cameras and preset selection and now you might think up to five presets. No, that's not the case because if I press the edges of this button you can see that I'm going forth and back between cam preset 1 to 5, 6 to 10 and then 11 to 15. So that's pretty neat. So that was the size of the button. If I press the lower edge of the button I'm going back to camera selection. Now if I press the upper edge of the button it does something different. It's cycling what you see in the menu and uh, we have set it up to do so four times. Actually, all these things, if you want to have more than four levels of menu, no problem. You can easily do that. You can add it in configuration. If you want more than 15 presets, if you want less than 15 presets, 
both are possible, no problem. And uh, actually the same with camera selection. So we have five cameras on this selector. We could actually subject that to the same methodology by pressing the edges of the shift key. We can go to camera six to 10, no problem. It's all configurable, but let's just stay at the basics for this video now and go back to the controller. So we'll take a look at this up here. And uh, of course we have the joystick. That's kind of the most important thing. So we'll just, uh, we have a target with us, which is this flower and um, we'll, zoom into this uh, flower so we have something we can work with and um, so basically the joystick has a zoom when you rotate it's zooming when you move it uh, to the sides it, it's panning if I move it up and down it's tilting this is all natural to be expected right so no uh, news there let's take a look at the menu so in the menu we see exposure mode it's currently at auto and i think auto seems to overexpose the picture a little bit we can do something about that in uh, exposure mode because actually if we go a um, a few steps in the menu we'll find something called exposure level compensation this is it it's currently off but if i change it to on then notice what happens on the second menu right there if I turn it on, now this becomes enabled and I can adjust the exposure level compensation. So I can turn down the exposure a little bit. This means, and that's in particular what happens when you have a very dark environment like this, um, the camera will automatically um, think that this picture should be uh, um, more, more bright and it will turn the... Um, you know, iris shutter speed in the right direction to bring more light into the picture. But in fact, we want the background to be black. So this is what exposure compensation can do for us. Now, we also have chroma suppress, and that's basically something we can use to adjust the, the color, uh, sorry, um, the, the colors of the picture. It has three levels. It can be off, one, two, and three in this particular Visca camera. And this is all from the uh, command list of the camera. Aperture, aperture gain is like uh, sharpness of the picture and we should see that we now have an overly sharp picture and I can bring it the other way. Now we should see a much softer picture on the screen. Um, let's just go through this menu again and back to the exposure mode because if I'm in auto exposure mode, this uh, then I had the exposure compensation. But if I go to manual, you can see I have access to iris shutter speed and gain. Now, interesting. These values you see right there, they have a small um, um, stop icon, like this is uh, prohibited. We can't adjust these parameters. Nothing will happen if we try, but um, it actually does reflect what we see in the camera. So now I'm just placing my hand over the lens and you'll see it's trying to gain the camera. You see it right there. And now it's, it's dropping back. And what I'll do now is to set it to manual mode. So in this mode, we can now adjust it manually. And you see the iris is changing. Now the shutter speed is changing and the gain is changing. If I go to shutter priority, it means that iris and gain will follow the shutter speed. So as I change the shutter speed, you'll see changes to these two values to compensate. And in this case, again, the exposure mode uh, level compensation will kick in to adjust the image and try to hit the same tone. If I go to iris, it's now iris priority, and you can see the other twos are out of the game. I can't adjust them, but I can see their values. And finally, uh, no, actually, that's it. So um, if I go to auto mode, no, wait, if I go to manual mode, that in this mode, you'll actually see that even exposure compensation is removed because it does not make any sense when you have complete manual control of the camera. So... Um, if we look at this menu, we have the white balance mode and that's in auto. Uh, if I go to indoor, we have indoor, outdoor. You can see the changes in the picture. You have one push trigger. And if I try that, then I turn the encoder and it will now try to figure out a white balance based on that. There we go. And if I go to uh, auto tracking white balance and then finally to red and blue gain, you will see that I'm able to paint the picture. And guess what? If you're painting your picture like that, that is a really good application for taking one of our RCP panels and apply to a robotic camera because you can, um, for an RCP operator who wants to uh, con control this manually, uh, red and blue gain would typically be mapped to encoders on an RCP. 
and of course the iris joystick and all this. So that's not what we typically demonstrate for robotic cameras, but you can easily do it because it's the same software they run. It's configured in the same way as well. The final things we want to look at in this video would be uh, auto. And um, let's just zoom in right here on, on the flower. So we are currently in, um, in, in auto mode. And um, if I go to manual mode, I'm able to adjust focus manually. So what it does here is uh, it gives me a, a way to adjust the focus of this flower. And um, the thing that you see is that it's almost like it has only two modes. And that's a pretty good, um, uh, nice thing I want to show you because it's because it's um, yeah it's it's something with the speed. I'll just show you a moment in a moment. But um, let's say that we are completely out of focus. We are in manual mode, and we want to trigger um, one push focus. That's on this encoder. So I'm now going to trigger one push focus, and then momentarily I have uh, focus coming from from this knob. Okay, so what's uh, what's with the speed thing? Now, uh, it, we should look at that by uh, bringing up the configuration. So if I go to the online configuration of the unit, then we'll see uh, what that's about. And uh, I go now to advanced, So I and I go to knob D. And on knob D, we can see that in state three, we have focus, and there's a speed limit parameters currently set to zero. And that means when we send a command to adjust focus, it's just going far too fast. So um, I'm going to set a limit of seven instead so that it's really brought down in speed. And now I'll save this setting and we'll update the controller with these settings. Uh, well, that was the wrong button. I'll just check for updates. That's what I need to do. And then shortly we'll see how the, the different speed setting on the focus adjustment will kick in and give us access to more fine grained focus pulling. So the controller is now updated and we um, will see that the focus adjustment that was just before it was completely crazy is now much better. So in fact, I need to turn this quite a lot before you see the res results. But there you go. You can see that I brought it into focus and I have much more fine grain control of focus at this point in time. Out of focus and back into focus right there. This was the Sony SRG300. There are things to say about presets and how we can label presets so you have nice labels in the displays, but I will not touch on that subject in this video. There are tons of other videos. It works absolutely the same way, so don't worry about that. But um, that's another Visca camera added to the list, and you can uh, safely consider the PTC Fly and the PTC Pro a great controller for your SRG300 cameras. Let's get this party started.